I like the Bible because the Bible is a real book. It's not like Star Wars, something that cannot happen. Are y'all listening to me? It's not fictitious stories like Creed. There is no Apollo. There is a Ali. Oh, y'all not listening to me. But the Bible is a real book. When the Bible speaks about something, it actually did happen. I like the Bible because the Bible does not just show the perfect people. I mean, if we were writing the Bible, we would only put the good stories in. But because the Bible is a real book, it often tells stories of people that were pretty raunchy. People that had issues. Some stanky people. <laughs> some people that had addictions. The Bible doesn't gloss over it as if it did not happen. But the Bible opens up to us the lives of people that are messed up. And the interesting thing is that God uses those kind of people. Hallelujah. I like the Bible because of the effect it has upon my life. I don't know about you, but by reading it, just, just reading it and listening to it being read, it changes me. It gives me hope. It lets me know that the grass withers and the flowers fade. But the word of our God will stand forever. I like the Bible because it's truthful. And once you read it, you can see how truthful it is and it changes us because once you put it in your mind, it changes you. Most of all, I believe I like the Bible because it gives me direction. I, I'm not really good at always following directions. My family say, I, I, I will, sometimes I'll say I have a sharp cut, and my son and daughter will call it a long cut. Because I don't like to listen to the GPS. It, it, I don't like telling me what to do. I think I can find it on my own. And so often, I find out that I've gone way out of the way, and I have to make up stories about, oh, y'all know what I'm talking about that. But, but, but the good thing about the Bible, it gives you clear direction. I love the Word of God. Our scripture text today is found in the book of Judges, and it's ensconced in a story that gives us some insight on how God guides our lives. Uh, it's found in Judges chapter 15 and verse 20. It says, And he judged Israel for 20 years in the days of the Philistines. Uh, the judges were a quite interesting time period. People would fall away and then they'd come back to God. They'd fall away and then they'd come back to God. They'd fall away from doing what God told them to do. God would send some enemy. It would be the Amorites or the Midianites or the, uh, 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 the Philistines. And they would punish the children of Israel. And when the children of Israel had gone through this punishment, they'd pray and God would be relieve them of their enemy. And he would have these judges. There was, in the book of Judges, there's 12 men that judge and one female that judge. God would use these people to deliver his people out of sin, out of degradation, out of slavery. And one of these interesting judges, the last one actually, is Samson. He's, he's quite interesting because his story could be a movie that would be a blockbuster. Samson has three chapters to his story. The first chapter is a Nazarite. The second chapter is narcissistic. And the third chapter is nothingness. I want you to listen to this statement, and originally I want you to repeat it after me, so I want you to listen to it first. God might do more for you in the next chapter of your life than in all the previous chapters combined. Okay, I want you to repeat after me. God, God might do more for you, do more for you 
in the next chapter of your life than in all the previous chapters combined. That's why I come to this Bible text. Our first chapter of his life is a Nazarite. A Nazarite is being a part of a club. Like Adventists. We have these rules in our, our club. We have a manual of the Holy Ghost that gives us some guidelines of what we're supposed to do. And everyone is a seven-day Adventist. They're supposed to follow the guidelines. Amen, Lights. Uh, that, that's what it says. Uh, and it's interesting about Samson. The Samson didn't on his own choose to be a Nazarite. An angel found his mother that was not able to have children and told her, I want you to start living the Nazarite life. Are you with me today? I want you to make this child. And then she told, the angel told the father the same thing. And so this child grew up in the church. This child grew up in cradle. He had parents that took him to Sabbath school. Help me, Holy Ghost. Uh, he, he had parents that invested in Christian education and taught him how he should live, what he should eat, what he should not put on his body, things he should do and things he should not do. The Bible does not really say that Samson said that's what he wanted to do. His parents put it on him. Oh, he's not getting a witness here today. That's why his parents led him. They said, this is what you have to be. And so this was the only guy going around town that never got a haircut. Oh, we know we go. Yeah, can you imagine that today? It's the only guy that's going to, I'm sure people look at him what is wrong with you? Maybe you need to cut some of that stuff. All right? And it was going all kind of, it was the only guy that was going around town and everybody else at a certain age was drinking. Even in the church. And Samson was not supposed to drink. He was in the club, the, the Adventist club. He was in the, he was in the Remnant club. People that were, they, they went far beyond the call of duty. That's what, that's what the Nazarite did. Some people probably say, you don't have to do all that to be saved, but, but that's what the Nazarite, he was on a Nazarite vow. He was not to touch any type of dead animal. That means he was a vegetarian. Come on. <laughs> Oh, y'all not listening to me today, you? Can you imagine what he went through? He, he was a, a plant-based diet eater, all right? All these things, he was doing this because his mama and his daddy put him a part of the club. Well, Samson, I believe, was none compliant. He was doing it, but that's not the way he wanted to live. He was following it, but he was probably saying, as soon as I can get out this house, I'm going to cut my hair. <laughs> as soon as I can go down to Hooters, I'm going to give me something to drink. Why y'all not listening to me today? As soon as I can get out and do something, I'm, I'm going to have some fun in life. I'm tired of this kind of, he was incompliant. There were things that were going on in his little club, and he thought they were boring. He 
He told his mama and his daddy that he found a young girl with the Philistines. Now he was supposed to let his parents choose for him, but he told his parents who he wanted. You know those Philistine girls, they be looking good. Come on, say amen. Sometimes you, you say, my, my, my Jesus is real. When you see the Philistines, y'all can say amen. It's all right. Nobody get hurt, all right? Now, the, the Philistines, they, they were people. Where he lived in, 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 it was really close to Philistines. And so he often, I can imagine, skipping out of the house and every now and then going to look at the Philistine girls. The reason why many of the pews 
are empty today is because some people have decided not to continue, continue to live this same old lifestyle. Samson had gotten a mediocre rut that he was in, and he just kept living that way for 20 years. That was just his chapter. That was just what he was into. That was just how he was going to live. He had decided that this is just all my life. He came back, found out that his wife was given to someone else, and this made him even angrier. But thank God for chapter 16. Chapter 16 may look like it was a chapter of disaster, but it was actually a chapter of blessings. In chapter 16, at the end of this one chapter, it says in 1520, it says he ruled, he ruled Israel or judged Israel for 20 years. For 20 years he lived a certain way. But in, in the land of the Philistines, but then God turned the page in his life. Chapter 16, the Bible says, after all these years of acting just a normal, regular old judge that didn't really care about anything, he went down and he met this woman named Delilah. Do you know God has set you up with somebody that's ready to take you out? Because it looks like they're going to take you out, but actually they're going to take you in. Uh, see, Samson was blinded by sin before he was blinded by the light. His vision was blessed. Blindness is something that the devil does to us to stop us from seeing what God wants in our life. And so, so he knew what his power was. He knew that if he would cut his hair that that would represent the power of God in his life. And eventually you know the story. He told her, if you cut my hair then I'll have no more power. And sure enough, she did it. She cut his head. And the Bible says that he got up to defend himself like he always did and did not know that the Spirit of God had left him. Samson was blinded because he thought this woman was going to take care of him and he had not had a relationship with God. God put him in this next chapter for a, for a reason. He's trying to teach us something. He's trying to get us to understand something about him. He's letting us know that the narcissistic life is really not the best way to live. So Samson gets his eyes taken out. He's taken and he's put into a mill where he has to ground corn like a cow, like an animal. Same old thing. Now, Samson sees that he's really, he has failed. They, well, the good news is that failure is an event and not a person. You know how I know? Because the Bible says, how be it? The hair on his head began to grow. Well, I love that. That's a graceful text. Regardless of where he was, see, you may lose, but that doesn't make you a loser. You, you, you may be you, you may be in a mess, but you still are open for mercy. You still have issues where you are outside of God's will, but you're not outside of his territory. He still wants to work, even in bad people that are messed up, acting like an animal. That's what I like about God. He, he is the one that created chapter 16. He brought him there. Sam, Samson for the first time in his life, he realized that he could, his strength had no bearing on his life. Oh, there are so many people today that think that their intellectual strength, that their strength of making money, that their strength of their good looks, their strength of their youth is going to take them somewhere. But one day you will realize you don't have any strength. Amen. Third chapter, chapter 16, is a chapter of nothing. Samson had to learn that he was nothing. Samson had, and, and God had, God, God said, look, God will frame you. God will give you a job, and you know that you should have told him that you should, you don't work for the Sabbath, but you wanted that job so much, you didn't tell him, and when they tell you to work for the Sabbath, you go ahead and work for the Sabbath, thinking God will understand, and God will mess you up. Amen. I will mess you up you so I can drink this, it won't hurt me. And you keep drinking before you know it, you're hooked on something that you're drinking. 
chapter 16. Hallelujah. He, he will not let you stay in the mediocre chapters of life. He will take you out and put you in a chapter when you have to follow him. Yeah, yeah. So, in this wonderful chapter, they take Samson and then they make sport of him. Yeah. Whatever you decide to follow God, if you change and not, not, not follow him, the devil will not only not only call you out, but the devil, the devil will make fun of you. He'll tease you. He'll let you see that you're looking stupid. They brought Samson out and they begin to tease him and, and laugh at him and do all sorts of funny things to him. And then finally, the Bible says, Samson, as if he was tired, said, just let me lean on some pillows. Let me lean on the pillows. Oh, I like that about God. God will let your enemy do all sorts of crazy things to you, but it is his desire for you to see that you're not the primary Samson did the first thing he's never done before in the whole three chapters, Samson prayed. You never hear a record of Samson praying before. This was not a suicidal prayer. This is a prayer of faith. That's why his name is listed in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. As one of the people of faith. And he prayed a crazy prayer. He said, Lord, give me strength that I might avenge the, all the Philistines from my eyes. And basically, what he was saying is, I'm ready to do what you call me to do. You told me that I was to be a big time Philistine killer. You told me I was to deliver the Philistines, or uh, the Israelites from the Philistines. And now, in the 16th chapter, now, Listen, listen, listen. Nothing is, is where you are. It's where you are when you realize that you have no other help than God. And that's when you begin to pray. Listen. Death to the self-life is the price and precondition to spiritual productivity. Say it again. Death to the self-life is the price and the precondition to spiritual productivity. Look at your life these last 12 months. Did you bring anybody to Jesus? Is there fruit in your life when you saw that things were better than what they were in 2014? Was there any productivity in your spiritual life? Are you the same today as you were last year? Then you're in the same rut that Samson was in. Thank God for a next chapter. Thank God that he will not leave you in the old chapters of life. He will not just let you stay in the old ways of life. He's so much God that he will take you out of the old chapters and will put you in a new chapter. A next chapter. See, God may do more for you in the next chapter of your life than he's done in all the previous ones to mind. Right. Well, well. We're ready to go into 2016. 16. And this is another chapter. What, what are you going to do in that chapter? Is it going to be the same old, same old? Are you going to say, Lord, let me die to the self-life. Let me understand that you're so much God and so powerful that you can do something in my life greater than you've ever done before. I am tired of the same old things in love you. God wants us to go higher than the human thought can be. Amen. God wants us to stop doing the same old, same old. He wants us to do a new thing. When you get into, when you get into the next chapter, there's a difference that happens in your life. When you come into the next chapter, there's some changes in your life that you cannot even understand. You don't even know how they happen, but that's what happens when you get into the next chapter of your life. God wants to put you there. He wants to lead you into it, but it's going to look like you're failing. It's going to look like you're not making it. It's going to look like the life has won, but God is setting you up for victory. Amen. The Bible says the Samson found some pillars. These pillars represent 
doing all the things that were killing him. All the food signs that was making fun of him. All the people that were giving him a hard time. All his own inclinations. His lusts of the flesh. His lusts of the eye. His pride of life. All these things were represented by these pillars. And he prayed.